everybody welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are all doing great today it is kind of raining i'm actually filming this and it's actually raining a little bit here while i'm filming this but it's not too bad but it is very wet and soggy which i'm actually not like opposed to right now it's been really dry as you may have heard me talk about in some other videos but anyway today i wanted to do kind of a full garden tour of everything that is blooming right now and let me tell you what things are looking gorgeous right now this is this is just the time i feel like when everything can just kind of take a breather and really just from the heat we have had, we had a really hot summer this year so i think things are kind of just taking a sigh of relief after the long hot summer so let's get right into this. So first, I wanted to start off with this beautiful Super Tunia hanging basket. Now, I actually planted this hanging basket myself. I planted one, yes, one, of the Super Tunia Vista bubble gum and two of these Royal Velvets. I don't know what it is, but this Vista bubble gum just like swallowed everything and these poor things are kind of struggling to kind of stay alive i'm actually not even sure if both of them are alive at this point <laughs> but but anyways but yeah the vista bubble gum is the star of the show here and i don't think i grew this last year um in kind of a pre-planted hanging basket but and this thing and it was big last year, but I don't know if it got quite this big. Now, I have been feeding this, which seems to be working and keeping it very well watered. So that is probably why it's gotten so big and it gets a good amount of sun. So I think that's probably why it's so massive. But like, my goodness, this is gorgeous. I don't think I've ever grown a hanging basket like this before in my life. And it is incredible. So I could talk about this honestly probably all day, probably even do a whole separate video on this, but I already did a video on petunias. So let's move on to some. This here is a balloon flower. I actually did a video on balloon flowers probably a couple months ago, um, but you can see it still has some blooms and it actually still has buds. Like there's still buds coming on. In fact, I have another one on the other side of the sidewalk that is not blooming right now, but it does have so, does have a few buds on it. So that's exciting. Now this, I actually have four of these. Another one is right here um, and two on the other side of the sidewalk. They basically look the same as this. So, um, but these, these were really pretty for a few weeks and I was hoping they'd rebloom because I don't know if you can see it but there's, there's like little buds all over it. So I wasn't sure if it was going to rebloom or if it would just kind of stay that way. I'm thinking it's probably going to be the latter, unfortunately. So, but they were very pretty. I actually showed pictures of them when they were blooming in my video on asters. So I'll flash that screenshot up on the screen of the thumbnail if you want to go check that video out. Now, this, part, this plant, I don't know if I've ever shown this to you guys, but this one is called a pincushion flower. I actually have two of these. I did not plant these, but I really do appreciate them. They are very pretty. They give you these beautiful, kind of unique looking flowers, actually. Um, I kind of wish I would see them more often because they're, I think, in my opinion, kind of underrated. I don't know, if you guys grown them, what do you guys think of them? Now, this particular pink cushion flower did not do, it didn't do particularly really, really great this year. Um, so, not sure, I think it might be getting a little overgrown. That's probably why, so maybe next spring I might have to get in here and maybe kind of split it up a little bit if I can. But yeah, so that's my pink cushion flower. I actually have two that I will show you in a minute after I show you this. This is, this is kind of just a random sedum that I've had for a couple of years. I actually got it at, I think I was doing a job for someone. 
and they let me have this. So I took it and I don't hate it. It's just not, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a sedum person. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. So I've been kind of going back and forth about maybe getting rid of this plant. Um, so, but I don't know. So let me know what you guys think. So now I want to show you that other pincushion flower. So I'm here on the other side of the sidewalk and you can see these beautiful um, pincushion flowers that are, these, this one is definitely has more blooms on it this year than it did in the previous years. I'm not sure why, but it's, it's definitely doing really good as well. And again, I did not plant this myself, but well, I did actually move this one like a few inches to this side but I mean I didn't do the initial planting and it's it's doing good it's it's not fussy and it just blooms so yeah that's my pincushion flower looks really pretty the only thing I don't like about it is that I probably should get on it is you do need to deadhead these things and when there's a lot of blooms it can be a bit of a chore and this is that other balloon flower I was mentioning. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Um, and you can see this has two more blooms. And for whatever reason, this one just looks kind of yellow. I think, well, it was really dry this summer. So that might have been why. I don't know if I watered it enough. But yeah, this one just looks kind of yellow, which at this point in the season, I'm not super worried about. I'm probably just gonna cut it down here in the fall. But but yeah, it just, I'm not sure what the yellow is about. So hopefully we can fix that by next year. And now I'm actually right here. I wanted to zoom in on <laughs> these. So these are wave petunias I planted along this sidewalk. And as you can see, they don't look terrific. And to be completely honest, I actually didn't take the best care of them. I think one actually died, um, which does not surprise me. I'm actually surprised these are still living. Um, but, and this one, this, these two here, they're hiding underneath this monstrosity of a hanging basket. And these are the only ones that look relatively decent. Well, the, this one is definitely the biggest out of all of them. Um, I think it's probably because it's getting more water and fertilizer, but as for the rest of them, these I more or less just kind of left fend for themselves. And while they did better than I expected a basically completely neglected petunias to do, as you can see, they still didn't do great. So that was kind of a garden blunder this year on my part. So. Yeah, I have them every year. They are not always fun experiences, but then you learn and you can try again next year. So those are my pretty sad wave petunias. They don't look super great. So why don't we go and look at something a little bit better? So I'm actually out here. This is the, what I like to call the island garden. You can see I have these beautiful marigolds still blooming their head off. Marigolds are always a winner for me. They're so gorgeous. And I know maybe a bit of a controversial opinion, but I actually really do enjoy the smell. I know I've heard a lot of people who really hate the smell of marigolds. I am, I must be in the minority because I really actually don't mind it. At the very least, I don't mind it. And it can be a little bit strong sometimes, but I actually really do, for the most part, enjoy it. And this here, I actually, these are more of them. These are kind of looking a little weighed down by all the rain. You've actually had like several days of rain. So everything is pretty saturated right now, which again is great. I have it in this box planter, which actually had a mini rose that didn't make it through the winter. So that was a bit of a bummer, but I do think that these marigolds here, let me do a little pan around, were definitely much better. Sorry, I kind of have to go down a little bit because these are leaning. <laughs> so yeah, and then I have this. This 
is a beautiful lantana I got in a hanging basket. And it, I think it's called, what is it called? Ah, oh, I can't think of the name right now. Um, beautiful pink and orange lantana. It was a little more pink than I wanted, but I really like the orange and it's, it's really pretty. Now, these are just some of the perennials I have on the island. They're kind of fizzling out. They're not doing too much. This Coreopsis, though, is doing really well. This one did not do very well for whatever reason. Uh, so they both got about the same amount of water, so I'm not exactly sure what the deal was, but either way, this one is definitely the better of the two. And I have these Black Eyed Susans, that I actually did do some pruning on these, um, so especially on that one. So not really much to see. There's some, there's a few blooms left, but I think they're pretty much wrapping up here for the season. And then, though, one thing that does look like it's going to bloom are these coneflowers. Look, it actually recently started putting out some new blooms. See, there's a little bloom there. And there's another bloom stalk in there. And I think I saw another one right in there. Yeah, so there's a few new bloom stalks. So I'll we'll get some more blooms here by the end of the season. So that's really exciting. Now over here to these um, containers, this, I actually got this kind of on impulse and I really like it. Just these zinnias. I actually showed it in a previous video I made about zinnias and it's doing Fabulous. My goodness gracious. Uh, you really can't lose with zinnias. And I don't know if you haven't tried them, please do. They are so easy and they, they really are solid performers. And this monstrosity is that aster I was showing you that looks a little bit sad right now because again, all the rain. But, but yeah. So yeah, here it is. You can see the blooms look a little not so great. Uh, so, so yeah, I might need some trimming here after the rain. And this thing here, I don't know. I gotta get that out. I don't know what happened to this. This was not doing great originally, but my goodness, it seriously picked up. This thing is amazing this is i think it's i think it's just called i think it's just a red and gold canna and this is gorgeous i actually want to try to overwinter this lantana inside the house and i think i want to overwinter it just like this so i'll see if it fits i think it will and yeah because I just can't see this thing die. I'm sorry. This thing is so gorgeous. And this is actually my first year growing cannas. And I'm actually really pleased that this one did so well. So that's kind of for the front. Now I do have some new additions actually on the side of the house that I really want to show you. So I don't know if you can see that. Sorry. Uh, so this. So this. And this are actually new this year. These are new installations this year. They're, I mean, they're just these plastic window boxes. So I was, I'm really excited about these. These are doing very well. I don't know, it looks like the screen's getting a little blurry. Sorry. Um, I don't know if you can, might be having a hard time focusing, sorry. Um, so this is what, so this is what they look like. This is the one, I think this is on the right side and this one here on the left side. These have done surprisingly well. Um, now this, so this is, these have had kind of an interesting, they've kind of been through, I wanna say a bit of a transformation. So I originally actually, when I got these back, I think it was the end of June, I originally planted other plants in here that I've pulled out because they didn't do well. There were, I think it was Terenia, um, and I think I had some begonias. 
they did not do well. So I actually ended up pulling them out and I planted these, which is which actually was a steal now that I think about it because these did really great. And I actually planted these like the end of July and they look amazing. So these are actually, um, oh, what it, I think it's, it's a grape lantana, luscious grape lantana, I think. And this one is called Double the Sun Coreopsis. Aren't they so gorgeous? And and the Coreopsis is actually a perennial. So I'm actually gonna try overwinter it in this window box. I don't know if you noticed this. It looks like it wants to do, excuse me, like scary. Uh, excuse my bad camera skills. Um, you can see it kind of like wants to trail. I kind of like that. It's like a little bit of a trailing motion. Um, so, so yeah, those are, that's this one. And there's this one over here. And what's interesting about these is the lighting is kind of weird here. And I think that's where I kind of overestimated, like I think it's a little too sunny for shade plants, but I don't know if it's quite, quite sunny enough for full sun plants. These are full sun plants and they seem to do just fine. So that's kind of an interesting experiment. I'm glad I tried because, so now I know I can do full sun plants here. So yeah, these actually, they really did have, even though they had a bit of a rough start, they did, these, they look really beautiful now and I'm very pleased. So those are the new additions. And now I wanna show you these pots here. I have by the fence here. So I have these zinnias. I started the, I showed these in a previous video and I think they have more blooms on it, more blooms on them now. You can see everything's just kind of, this one's kind of leaning a little bit. I think it's just because of all the water from all the rain. So yeah, it doesn't look terrific um, when they're leaning, but <laughs> this one is just kind of, I just kind of let it grow, let it go in this kind of <laughs> state. Uh, I don't know if that really matters. So, um, so yeah, these I actually started from seed, and they are getting that powdery mildew I was talking about. You can see those little white splotches. They, and this is usually the time of year they start to get it. So again, don't worry about it. And this lily was, I think it was a double lily. I actually featured it, or I showed a picture of it when it was in bloom. I think it was in my video on Oriental Lilies, I think. So, so yeah, it's obviously not blooming now, but that's, I kind of wanted to have something else to bloom when that thing was done. So, moving on to this pot. This pot is actually um, another one of my... What is it? These are wave petunias, sorry. Um, these wave petunias actually did really well. I think because these ones got more water and fertilizer. The other ones I showed you by the sidewalk, unfortunately, they really didn't do all that well. So that was, again, kind of a bummer. <laughs> um, but, you know, I really take that great care of them. But these ones, you can't see them right now, but on the underside of the leaves, they have aphids. I don't know if you've ever grown wave petunias and had aphid problems, but this is probably my second year doing them and I got aphids again. And I don't know, like, I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong or if it's just kind of just happens. So I do try and spray them off as much as I can, but I think ultimately, like at this point, I don't think it's worth stressing too much about. So, so yeah, but they, these ones actually did much better. So I was actually very pleased with these. So again, they do look a little bit sad right now because of all the rain, but you know, they're really pretty. Like just a classic bloom. And these, this, this hanging basket is very interesting. So this is actually a hybrid. You can actually see it's supposed to be like a red, white and blue theme. I mean, obviously it's purple, but it's hard to get blue, actual blue flowers. So you get the point. Um, so these are what I believe they call a pet koa. So have you ever seen, there's another one called 
a petunia look-alike, you could say. That's called a calabracoa. It has smaller flowers and it has this kind of leaves. But you can see these flowers are a little bigger or than a calabracoa, but they look a little smaller than a standard petunia. So they kind of cross them together and you get the kind of the best of both worlds. Um, so that's a pet koa and these did really well. They didn't have a brief lull when I had to trim them up, but these, these are a winner. And I've had this hanging basket since I think it was May. Got this right around Memorial Day, I believe. Maybe a week or so around that day-ish. Um, so yeah, that is, um, so yeah, that's kind of these pots. And I have this random gladioli. So I've kind of had mixed luck with gladioli this year. They've, some of them, you see some of them bloomed and this other pot actually over here, these glads are long since gone, but most of these bloomed and only one of this bloomed. I didn't have a whole lot of luck with them in the ground either. So I, maybe I just got small corms so they didn't, weren't really big enough. Maybe only a few were, so maybe I'll try saving them and see if they bloom next year. But I think this one's super pretty. Like the pink with the white modeling kind of modeling. I don't know if you call it that or strikes, streaks, I don't know. So yeah, very pretty. So here I've, I think I am in, I guess you could call this my fort garden, if you will. This is where I like to keep a lot of my tropicals, um, but, or like my more sun loving or sun tolerant tropicals. And these are the beautiful sun patients. These ones are certainly a winner for me. Sun patients did really well for me, and I can't wait to show you um, more that I have in a pot. I gotta walk up this chicken run. I gotta be careful, it's really wet. So, but yeah, so the sun patients this year did really well, and I was so pleased with them. Oh my goodness. You, if you haven't tried sun patients, please. They are very much worth your money. So I'm actually on the top of the fort now, and I am here with this beautiful elephant ear. So this elephant ear has been through kind of a lot this season, to be honest. It kind of had a setback when I planted it in this pot with these ginormous sun patients now. They were not like this originally, but they really grew and they, everything in this pot grew very nicely. So this elephant ear had a bit of an interesting, kind of a few set, maybe a setback or so, especially at the beginning when I just planted it out, it just like fell all over. So it just, it did not look good at all. So, but it, as you can see, it has since rebounded and you can see new leaves and a little bloom. So elephant ears sometimes will produce these, like, they kind of look like peace lily flowers, kind of, but they will produce them. I actually got a lot of them. Um, so I'm not sure what that was about, but so, so yeah, that's what they look like. And over here I have my begonias that these ones, they did, they did pretty well. I had one in here that it's not doing super great. I'm not sure why, um, but there they are. They still look pretty for the most part. I did actually have a second pot of them that I actually did get rid of. And these are just, these are just some pansies I picked up like a week or so ago. These are actually not staying in this pot. When it cools down, I'm actually gonna plant these in the ground. And I actually would like to make a video on that when I get around to doing that. And these are some more fall containers that, well, these actually, they were these, they call them, I think they're called like ready refills. So I found these when I was at Lowe's and probably two, three weeks ago, planted these, I think it was two weeks ago, sorry. I planted these up and, and they are already starting to fill in. So they have these beautiful orange pansies, this creeping Jenny, and the spike thing, I think it's called a rush grass. So, so there you go. So I am keeping them here just kind of temporarily until it cools down. This is a little bit shadier 
Once it cools down a little more, I'm gonna display it out in the front by the island. So that's sort of my, um, or I guess what's left of my tropical escape here, um, at least for now. And now I wanna show you probably the area of the garden I am most excited about this year. So this is the, I guess you could call this the patio garden. These are all very informal terms. So I have these these beautiful asters I showed in this other video, in the other video I made on growing asters. I have tons of lilies that I have gone like crazy for lilies this year. And you see there's some here. That's an Easter lily. This one is an Easter lily. Some oriental lilies back there. None of them are blooming, so there's not much to see. And these are more Asiatic lilies. Uh, so, and this beautiful mum. So this mum, actually, I planted last September and it came back. So I have heard that sometimes mums don't always come back, but these ones, this one did. I think I got it in the ground early enough and it, and it came back and it is loaded with these beautiful red blooms. It's very fall-like and I really love it. So these are some more, these are actually white balloon flowers I got. These were originally supposed to go to another area of the garden that I will show you closer to the end of this video. I know this video is already super long, so I'm sorry, but um, I just kind of wanted to show you everything that's going on right now. So these are balloon flowers. You can see these beautiful white balloons. I love balloon flowers. I really, they, they are really wonderful plants. And this, this dahlia here, this thing is a beast this year. Um, so I have, this is the first time I would say I've really had success with dahlias. And the difference is I have tried dahlias before in containers. They do not work for me in containers. I am not sure why, but they just don't. Oh, stupid. Sorry. It's lantern flights. It's a horrible insect. Um, and, but this, this red dahlia, let me pan around um, to this side. Um, this dahlia here has done magnificent. And I thinking from I'm thinking from now on I will grow dahlias in the ground. And this particular variety, I think it's called this was actually a mixed package, but this is red obviously. So I think this is called Top Mix Red Dahlia. It's supposed to be a dwarf dahlia, which it is on the shorter side, but I mean, this thing is wide. This thing has got to be like 18 inches wide. Maybe two feet, I don't know. Maybe not two feet, but I'd say about 18 inches wide. Um, so that is this bed. And this bed, this bed like right here from this whole thing has seen like a complete overhaul this year. This back section, excuse me, was almost entirely filled with irises. And I do, I did still leave plenty of irises obviously, but I really like just mixing it up. Like, I love variety in my garden beds, and I think it just looks, I don't know, it's very pleasing to the eye for me. So that's this bed. This is probably the bed that I have spent the most time and effort on this year, and I am very, very happy. I'm actually going to probably be planting some spring bulbs here very soon, so I am very excited about that. So, so well, yeah, that's kind of what's going on in this bed. So now I actually wanna show you an area I haven't really shown very much of, and that is the shade garden. So, well, I don't know if you'd actually call this a shade garden, but it is, well, this section here with these impatience are. So you can see, I have these hostas. These hostas I actually transplanted from this bed here. Um, and I think they really, do better. This, that area, this area here actually gets a lot more sun. And let me tell you, these hostas do not appreciate it. Although for whatever reason, they decided to bloom. I'm not sure what that is about, but they decided to bloom. And 
over here, I have this. This plant, I actually got these last year. These are called turtle heads. So there are these really pretty, I think they come in different colors, but these are um, more pinkish flowers. And I really do like them. So these ones have a little more. And this one here is just kind of done with, again, a random impatient. That, I did not plant that there actually. It seeded itself all on its own. Um, but, so yeah, you can see these are not looking super hot um, because again, it's been really dry and for the most part. And Iscaria gets, I think, a little too much sun for them. But they did actually, though, make a bit of a rebound. Like they looked, I've been cleaning out so many dead leaves out of these. It's kind of ridiculous. So, but yeah, they, I don't think this is really the ideal spot for them. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on in this bed. So, but it is kind of nice to see that they're putting out new blooms and I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, they really kind of put out new blooms, which I really do like. And you can see these, these are kind of some Lily of the Valley that look kind of done for the year. And these impatience also just kind of seeded themselves. I actually, they seem to come back for me. Whenever I, re whenever I leave their seeds alone, they actually, I think this is the second year I've had impatience reseed for me. I'm not sure why, but they seem to do pretty well with that. So, hey, free plants. I am not, not opposed to that. So, whatsoever. So, that was a very pleasant surprise. And right above me, actually, I actually have some in hanging baskets. I don't know if you can see that. These beautiful ferns. This is like, again, this is a shade area. So, so you have these. I don't know if you can see that. The camera's a bit blurry today. I think it's just because of all the rain. So, so yeah, there they are. And there's just house plants I have. You can't really see them from behind the railing, but there they are. And so yeah, these ferns. It's a nice little area up there, actually. I really like it. And that these other hostas that have been here forever, I don't even know how long they've been here. They've probably been here for over 30 years. So long before I, probably long before I moved in here, which was almost 20 years ago, 19 years, I moved in this house and it, and these hostas have actually done surprisingly well for how dry it has been. They don't look perfect, but they did much better than I thought they would, which is great. Um, but, and I think I may have only watered them once or twice during the whole summer. So they are clearly very much survivors. So yeah, I know they're kind of just a classic run of the mill shade plant, but I mean, they really are easy and they're really spectacular. So yeah, those are hostas. And now I want to show you, oh wait, before I go, I want to show you that other area. This beautiful hanging basket of New Guinea impatience I got, I think it was three, almost four weeks ago? No, almost three weeks ago, excuse me. And this has really exploded in blooms. Now, I, the reason I got it so late is A, I've had two pots of New Guinea impatients that for whatever reason just died on me. They just died and I wasn't, <laughs> no, I'm still kind of at a loss as to why, but these ones are doing really well and I'm actually planning on taking these. I actually got a big pot. I'm going to take the whole thing and pot it in a new pot and grow it inside as a house plant over the winter. So, yeah, you, I've done it with standard impatience. I haven't done it with New Guinea impatience, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, fingers crossed. I think they'll probably do fine. But if you have any experience overwintering New Guinea impatience, please let me know in the comments. So, but yeah, I'm going to be putting it under a grow light, so I'll see how well that does. I'll probably do a video on that later on. So, yeah, this is kind of like the shade, part shade ish garden. So now I want to move over to, I guess you could call it, um, kind of another just random area, I guess. So this is another area, another little garden bed. This is actually a relatively new garden. I, may have sh I might have showed it a few times. 
actually in other videos, but you see I have these monster daisies. I actually grew these and this daisy, both from seeds, and they are massive. And I have this random wave petunia here, again, some gladioli and some lilies that are kind of done at this point, and a random Easter lily trying to peek out. So, and this salvia. So, this is, this salvia did really well. This one, for whatever reason, did not. I am not sure why. I'm going to give it a little more time to um, see what it does next year. If it doesn't do anything, I think I'm just going to pull it out. So, and then there's just a bunch of daylilies, orange daylilies. I have so many of these things. It's <laughs> kind of crazy, actually. So, yeah, there's this area here. And um, there's one more area I would like to show you, actually. Actually, I lied. There is a few more areas I want to show you. So this is a, just a mom I picked up from my gro a local grocery store we have around here. And I actually have this. This was originally a green hanging basket where I had strawberries in that I have since planted, and I will show you that disaster here in a second. But I actually spray painted this orange. So to give it kind of a fall-like feel. So I'm deciding, I think this hanging basket I will use chiefly for fall stuff. I really like that. And these strawberries in this pot aren't looking great. They kind of need cut, but they don't look terrible. But I do have a few strawberries coming in. Oh, it looks like a, something got in it. Um, and <laughs> this mint. Now... This area is a bit of a mess. I really need to get in here and weed. And so this, this area has been kind of neglected this year. I don't know if you can see, it is kind of overrun with weeds. I've got to do a serious weeding here before the end of the season, that's for sure. But, and these actually didn't do super great. This might be part of the reason why. Um, again, it's also been dry, but I think my own neglect is probably partly to blame. Um, I do have another one. It's basically the same, so I'm not going to bother showing you it. But, yeah, so it's kind of what it looks like. And, and, yeah, so there you go. And so <laughs> I got to take care of this here. And I don't know when I'll get to that. But... But yeah, it didn't do super great. But I guess to compensate these beautiful sunflowers. So this is, these are actually a perennial sunflower. These have been here forever. I actually was talking to my neighbor who's lived here since I think it was the early 90s. And she said that this sunflower hedge was here. So this hedge is probably over 30 years old at this point. And, but isn't it so pretty? What we do, I actually mow it down until like probably the end of May, because if we leave them go, they get really tall and really floppy, which is really not ideal. So they actually do look a lot shorter, again, probably because of our drought, but they really came around. They were also late to come into bloom to this year. That might be the one plant this year that kind of was late but it is super pretty right now. It just is this wall of yellow. Oh, so fabulous. So sorry, I got sidetracked there with a few areas. Um, and these are my zinnias. Look at how much they have grown in just the last two weeks. So these, um, I did a video on them, and they have exploded, exploded in blooms. I'm really kind of blown away by these. They are so full of so much color. And this time of year just seems to be the time, at least for me, when zinnias are just at their best. They just look gorgeous. They're full of color, and 
again, they're so easy. I hardly have barely touched these. I probably maybe have watered them once or twice maybe. Um, so, um, I don't know, maybe a handful of times. And look at them. They took our heat and drought like champs this year for the most part. And they just look absolutely amazing. And this is the other strawberry patch and my blueberries that do not look very good right now. So yeah, so those are the zinnias. And I don't know why I said I only had one more area. I actually have like just a few more, but yeah, see like, I always like, oh, there's something else I need to show you. So just bear with me. Um, so, okay. So this is also a new area in the garden, but this is, I guess you could say kind of a sad corner of the garden. I mean, it's pretty, I have these beautiful mums, but if you can see, this was, I actually lost um, my little white dog earlier this summer. It was super sad, and but I decided to kind of memorialize him and um, plant a little memorial garden around here. So because you have these beautiful mums and I'm going for mostly white flowers. I actually ordered some bulbs. Um, I, got, I think I got some snowdrops and some white double daffodils I want to plant in this area here this fall. So, so yeah, that's just but I do, and I got this rose. Obviously, this is probably the center of attention here. I have this gorgeous, gorgeous rose. I forget what, I think it's called Champagne Wishes. So you can guess the theme. It's kind of a whitish theme because he was a really, he was a white dog and he was such a good boy, but I'll miss him. So yeah, I actually haven't showed you this area. It happened, he died, I think, what was it? Yeah, July 29th. So he as he died like two months ago. So, but I haven't really showed you it. So, but yeah, I just decided to do a little memorial garden. And yeah, so I think it's a great way to memorialize if you've ever lost a pet to add just like a little memorial garden for them. So that's that. And now I have just two more pots that are going to be the last I know this is going on for really long. It's like 45 minutes as I'm filming this. <laughs> and so this is a really long video, but I hope you're enjoying seeing all the blooms and seeing everything that's going on in the garden. So yeah, let's get over to those pots and we'll get this wrapped up here. So this is, I kind of wanted to end this video off for, with a more of a, um, I guess a fall-like feel, if you will. These giant pot of mums. I actually splurged on these. This is, I think it's a seven color pot of mums I got at my local garden center. I actually have another one. I think looks a little better and I'll get to that one in a second. But this, these were kind of expensive, but oh my goodness, I think they're going to be worth every penny. So just look at all of the beautiful colors. Oh my goodness, I love mums. I have gotten so many mums over the years, it's not even funny. But I really, really like them, and they just give you that beautiful fall color that everybody loves. And this is that other one. It's the same, it's the same thing, same mix of colors, but I wanted to show you it. I think they actually look really pretty with just the buds on them. And I actually would, at a later date here, like to do a video on mums do a little bit of a spotlight on how you can be successful with your mums. So, but yeah, so I just kind of wanted to end this video with a more autumnal flower as we are in fall now already. I can't believe it. So, so yeah, that's kind of all that's going on here at Buckeye State Gardening. I know it's, I know this video was super long. Um, I was not anticipating it to be quite this long, but um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the flowers and in no, I hope you guys know that it is not too late to plant. Um, I mean, I guess that depends on where you live, but if you live in Ohio or in zone 6B, um, and around that general area, I guess it's not too late to plant. 
You can still plant some beautiful fall plants, fall color, trees, shrubs, perennials, all that. You can still do all that stuff right now. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, if you guys could please leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. And cheers to you if you got if you got through to the end. Um, and I will see you guys in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.